Yeah, that means PM. It's gonna be a long night. Tonight I'm engaging in a proud astronomer tradition. I am using a telescope. I'm staying up all night to stare at the stars via my computer. So these beeps and noises you keep hearing, that's the telescope operating remotely. Really what you're hearing is the chat feature beeping back and forth. The annoying noises, the annoying noises are really helpful because if you start to fall asleep, they're loud and you notice them. So the telescope I'm using is the three and a half meter diameter telescope at Apache Point Observatory. That telescope right there. Now, I've observed in this telescope a ton. In fact, I used to work at this telescope. After college, I worked at this telescope for a while as a telescope operator. So on this telescope, they split the nights uh, in half. So you get sunset to midnight, midnight to sunrise. And I have B, B half tonight. So midnight to sunrise. I used to do this all the time. That was before I had a toddler who likes to wake up at 5 a.m. This ability to remotely observe is actually an amazing thing. And the advantages are obvious, right? Instead of having to fly all the way to New Mexico, drive several hours up a mountain, acclimate to being at nine or 10,000 feet, instead of having to do all that, I get to wear my slippers and my sweater and drink coffee in my basement. There's a huge savings of money, a huge savings of time and effort. There's also accessibility reasons why it's good to be able to observe remotely in the comfort and the safety of your own home. So tonight in this video, I want to kind of document the process, what it's like to observe remotely, and it will showcase my descent into madness as I approach 24 hours of being awake. A few tips for staying up all night. Drink a little bit of coffee. Drink a ton of water. Uh, cool temperatures for me seem to help, so trying to keep the air a little bit cool. Obviously bright lights, a little bit of music. Whatever you do, don't turn off the volume on your laptop. One time I did fall asleep while observing sitting on my couch, and it was one of these loud beeps which woke me up and meant that we didn't waste a lot of time and money on the telescope. All right, so we're observing. The weather is clear and beautiful. We started off by observing a standard star, so one where we know the brightness, we know what the star is supposed to look like, so we can calibrate our instrument. And now we're off to looking at the first supernova. Do you want to see a picture of it? That's it right there. And that's a galaxy. All right, just after 1 a.m., we're on to our second supernova. I'm feeling shockingly good for having been up 20 hours at this point. I think being an observational astronomer is good preparation for parenthood in terms of sleep deprivation, and probably vice versa. Just to prove how legit of an astronomer I am, I have a mouse pad for the observatory I'm using. observe faint things like this, you have to take very long exposures. So for this particular supernova, I'm doing three exposures at 1200 seconds each. This means that you have several minutes of setup where you need to get the telescope very precisely set up and it's tedious, and then you wait for an hour. Ooh, we just saw a meteor fly through the field. Check this out. All right, so this image is what we call the guide camera. We're taking spectroscopy, which means we break the light into its various colors, but we only are able to do that with the light that falls along what we call the slit. So this is an image of all the rest of the stuff in that field of view. So that's a star, these are all little stars. That was the previous exposure here. This was the nest exposure, completely saturated. Well, that's certainly fun. It's not uncommon to see meteors when you're outside watching the sky. It's a little unusual to see them fly through the telescope's field of view like that. I mean, it doesn't happen every night. What's even more wild, and it's never happened when I've observed, but I've seen pictures of this, is when airplanes fly through your field of view. And those things are wicked bright, so they can really mess up your data. Okay, it's after three. I'm starting to get a little tired. We're on to our fourth supernova. Oh. 1,200 seconds, 1,200 seconds. Okay. When you start to get tired, 
it's really important to triple check everything. Make sure you type in the right numbers. It's really easy to just forget to do one of the exposures. So if the weather holds, we should be able to observe for at least another hour, maybe hour and a half. <sighs> one thing you have to do when you're remotely observing is watch the weather very closely. Even though there's a person on site who can go outside and look to see what the weather looks like, if there's clouds rolling in or the humidity is changing and the telescope might have to close, you need to be prioritizing your targets in real time. One of the tools at our disposal that makes this a little easier is the cloud camera. This is basically like an infrared webcam with a fisheye lens on it. I have a small webcam version of it that I can see on my computer, but they also archive a movie of this every single night and you can watch the clouds roll by. And that makes a sweet time lapse. It's four o'clock. We're almost there. 10 minutes left on this supernova. Sunrise isn't for another 52 minutes, but twilight started 10 minutes ago. Even though the sun's not up, it's starting to approach the horizon. See, this is how dark it's supposed to be, and you can start seeing the sunrise. That's how dark it is now. So we're gonna run out this observation, and then according to the schedule of my team, I gotta go hit a couple of standard stars. Almost there. It's almost five o'clock. So the last exposures we have to do are basically special lamps that they have at the telescope that have particular wavelengths or particular colors that they emit. Um, and we use those as a final calibration. Here's an example of one. So each of these lines represents a single wavelength. And this is a combination of a helium, a neon, and an argon lamp. Looks like a sweet barcode. All right, and that's a wrap. 5 a.m. exactly. I'm off to bed. Science. Thank you.